Welcome to HFL 270, Capstone 2. We're going to do a little course overview here in a moment, but before that, I wanted to just uh, take a moment here and pause and reflect on what is 11 courses uh, that have been developed over the last couple of years for the Healthcare Facilities Leadership Program and for the industry. Um, it has been an amazing journey with some amazing people. Um, we have all learned a tremendous amount leading up to this point and each day uh, learn even more. You know, one of the comments I've heard over and over again, uh, in fact, it's kind of was my own little mantra uh, before coming into the course, and that was, you know, you don't know what you don't know. And um, I had a lot of students express that they had no idea what they didn't know that they didn't know as we've gone through this course. It has been a great journey. Uh, we have learned a lot together. Um, it has been a pleasure assembling these courses, and now going back and doing re do iterations on these courses and introducing these courses to instructors who are now starting to make iterations and improve on them. Um, I, it is my hope that over these uh, 11 courses, for those of you who've taken all of them, um, that you, know, you have seen the layers come together, the foundation be put in place. As a matter of fact, I know that after speaking with several of you, um, you have truly um, experienced, um, been able to apply this to your experiences in your in, in your in your jobs, and you you have let me know just how valuable the material has been in so many ways. Um, some of the most amazing things I've heard over the semesters has been how your networking and your relationships have grown. How when you're in meetings, you're so much more aware of what the discussion is about and how you're more engaged in the discussions. Uh, which is truly, uh, that's the exclamation point on this, on this program, that is leadership and growing in leadership, which I've been able to observe and see um, through these semesters and through these courses and through you. But Capstone 2, you know, when I came into um, this profession a couple years ago and I wrote this course and I did this course outline, uh, you know, I didn't really have a clear understanding of Capstones. I do now. Um, it, you know, it is a cumulative um, course we take back and we take a look back and we pull it together and when I originally wrote this if you read the KCTCS course description there's a whole section about managing in the course description in fact it says you manage HR functions such as competencies disciplinary actions hiring performance appraisals termination scheduling staff orientation job descriptions participate in organizational strategic plan perform SWOT analysis writing and presentations you know, that section right there that's in the KCTCS description today is going to be changed. I'm going to revise it to reflect this course. But when I wrote this, I had that whole management section because I, I really felt, you know, my experiences working as a manager and as a director, you know, a big chunk of it was dealing with management and HR issues. But I also recognized as time was going on that, A, there's so much more that we have to study. B, we really wanted to have a cumulative, um, you know, cumulative module that relates back to what we've done and see that you're going to be taking other management courses that will fill in a lot of those little gaps and uh, you know maybe again in a bachelor's or master's program uh, can spend more time on those issues because truly when it comes to competencies and disciplinary actions and hiring and performance appraisal and termination and scheduling and all that there's a wealth a wealth of information that could be shared in those areas and I'm not going to say this necessarily specific to healthcare, um, because those things are, are specific to many industries, but I can certainly say that my experiences in healthcare as a manager, as a director, that those items have, were, were big. They loomed large in my job the years I was doing the job. However, those can be handled other ways. Uh, we've replaced it with a, a, a different module that we're going to go over, we're going to go over with you in just a little bit. But again, HFL 270 Capstone, it has been a great journey. I'm so glad that you're here and taking this course. I look forward to your feedback as we go through this course. Um, you know, and I, I just, again, I, I think that the foundation that we've laid here and that you've helped me lay is not just going to benefit you, but I truly believe it's going to benefit those that have come behind you. Um, and I think that's the exciting part. I get the sense that, you know, you are part and we are part of a legacy thing here that is going to be built on whether it's, you know, whether it's even many other programs stand up. This may not be the only program like this in the country um, in due time uh, if the demand is there. And however, you know, it's the foundation stone, I think, of a lot of the future 
for those coming into the industry. And it also definitely is the future for a lot of young people coming in. There's going to be these young folks coming in. They're going to need to be mentored. Uh, they're going to need to be trained up. And they're going to need time to season into these roles along with this material that we, we've uh, gone through on these courses. So it's been an exciting time. It's been quite the journey. Again, I'm looking forward to continuing it to see where it goes. And I'm also truly looking forward to seeing where each of you go in your journey in this profession or really any other profession. So let's jump into the course competencies and overview of the course now. And again, like I said, I, 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 it's been a pleasure for me of putting this together and I hope it's been um, enjoyable for you going through it. HFL 270, Capstone 2. And I just want to touch on the course competencies and objectives. Again, and these really are the modules. I mean, this is one of the courses where the modules and the competencies are right aligned with each other. Call that experience. Um, I think hindsight, again, being 2020, having done all these courses, I would have done every course this way had I known what I know now then. Um, but it took me a cumulative of experience to get to the point where and I, I now understand, you know, building my syllabuses and building some of these fundamental documents need to intertwine tightly with the course itself. And it makes it actually a little easier to design the courses when they do. Um, but some of what I was doing was somewhat um, fragmented. But in this case, these competencies are tied right to your course modules. Um, you know, the first section there, understanding how skill set is applicable in related healthcare management roles. And then I, I go on to, to list them out um, in a little more detail. Express understanding and performance measures for related healthcare management roles such as biomedical engineering, environmental services, protection services, emergency management, and safety officer. And so in the first module, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to take and we're going to get dive into these a little deeper. We've touched on them. I mean, we certainly have. We came to the Joint Commission Standards and, and we came to some of the other things. But now what we're going to do is we're going to go deeper. We're going to sort of put ourselves in those roles, in those jobs, and we're going to come up with a much deeper understanding of not just what are those jobs about, but also if we were directly responsible for those folks, how would we measure, if you will, as it relates to a balanced scorecard, how would we measure their performance, their quality, their service, their work life, their finances? And, and we're going to, that's, that's what we're going to do for each one of these. We're going to go definitely deeper so that way you can have a better idea of, of just what those jobs really are. Because why you may not have to do those jobs directly, and candidly, some of you may have to be the manager of those areas directly. I, I can be candid. I was the manager of every one of those areas except for environmental services. Um, I always had a supervisor or manager uh, between me and staff in that area. But all the other areas, I definitely was directly the manager if there was an absence of a manager or an I was in an interim role. And sometimes these interim roles lasted quite a while or it was permanently that role. So I really want you to have that and I want you to have it at a deeper level. So that'll, that'll be several weeks of the course after our opening. And then we're going to get into the biggest part of the course, which is applying previous course studies to the development and management of healthcare project in the form of and it says project drawings, interim life safety documentation, infection control risk assessments, meeting coordination and minutes, project closeout and turnover. And the last part there, integrate project space, or the next line, integrate project space and equipment into maintenance and operations inventory and schedules. Um, I can't um, overstate enough about how um, this, is, this is really reaching, reaching hard um, this semester. And this is really, um, I think, asking quite a bit of not just you, but of, of, of me as I put this together. And I am going to need to be grading this, this information. Um, but I really felt it was, you know, um, I don't think it was an overreach. And I think this semester, without the technologies I really wanted, I think it's going to be maybe, maybe actually simpler now. I mean, maybe harder. I don't know. You know, I wanted to have a good CMMS database. That just hasn't materialized. And I certainly would have maybe liked to have you all working inside a CAD, and that really isn't something I think that is practical at this time. But having said that, you know, this is going to really force you to go back and really review layer by layer by layer by layer how this kind of comes together. You know, how, we can, how do we take a project and how do we apply, you know, um, all these things? I think the one of the most typical things to do, and I'm still kind of working on it as I do this lecture, 
um, how we're going to do the meeting coordination in minutes. Um, in my mind, uh, we're going to have more. We're going to have some collaborative sessions and multiple collaborative sessions that are basically going to be, if you will, um, project meetings. And during those meetings, you know, we're going to try to just update how we're doing uh, throughout the semester. And we may have to have one probably once every other week, minimally. Um, and I think that's probably going to do it. It's just have a collaborative session once every other week. So and basically, it's a project meeting is what we're going to have. So, you know, this is going to be kind of, I hope this is, uh, well, I don't hope, I know this is going to be very, um, a good exercise for us. I know that um, it'll definitely be interesting and it definitely will bring together all the things, many of the things that we've learned and many of the books we've been in over the last several semesters. So this, this is the meat part of the, of the, of the, uh, of the course right here. I think I dedicated seven weeks to it. Um, might have to slip in another week there but seven weeks to this to this process and it's also going to be very much self-directed and self-driven you're going to need to really manage your time um, to get this done and they really you, you really aren't going to be able to do this well at the end um, last minute this is not and I do want to forewarn you you're going to need to work on this each week all the way through to get this done um, in fact I would encourage an early start on this module and do not wait for the last week it just I don't think it won't be possible um, and then we get down to uh, the last couple weeks of the semester, which has to do understanding the importance of networking and partnerships. And I might want to qualify that a little bit too um, and talk about, you know, something that was talked about a lot at the recent ASHI conference uh, of 2015, and that is, um, and that is empathy. And that's, that's the subject that has kind of come through and it's been around for a while. And I really do hope to um, bring uh, somebody in the industry. I'm trying to find the right person to have a conversation with us about this subject. Um, you know, a lot of recruiters and recruiting companies who have been in this industry a while talk about this subject as it relates to facility management folks. Um, we, and we and I'll talk about this in more detail. And I can can I can relate to this. Um, having come from a engineering background, having worked for more of an engineering company, having been tightly you know wrapped around if you will, medical equipment and laboratory equipment with precision counts and where things are more systemic and process driven. Um, and then coming into healthcare, there's no doubt it took me some time and really even even yet um, to get a stronger sense of how the relationship and how empathy in the role is so very critical. You know, there, there is a phrase and it's a cliche, but people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And I think that, you know, well, I wouldn't say that's a mantra for this section. I would say that it's definitely one of the legs and one of the, the fundamentals things that, uh, you know, some people have that naturally and some people have to work on it, but it's one of those fundamentals that we all need to work on. Um, you know, I've, and, and I, I've taught my uh, staff when I was doing clinical engineering ab about customer service and the five steps of service and in every step of service uh, to be um, successful in customer service there was a proactive interactive component to it and I'm not going to go over with you right now in fact I will go over that later on during the session but the thing is is that if you if you have great customer service you can pretty much be a poor technician people think you're good and I've seen that over and over again. I've seen what I would consider poor technical people, or you might even go to the point of say maybe incompetent folks who have high levels of customer service and people truly believe they are very good or that they're good. Now, having said that, I've also seen people who have a, a good level of competence and also have good customer service and people think they're great. They really, really think they're absolutely great. You know, but here's the question, and I haven't seen it that often, and, and I don't, I can't say that I am this person, but I would like to think that some of you are or aspire to be. And again, I know we, we never arrive when it comes to trying to master something, but at the same time, we get closer and closer to, um, we get closer and closer to it. And so in this area, you know, to be really good and competent, and then also be really good, or if you will, great at empathy, and networking and partnerships, those two things together 
truly are, I think, the pinnacle of a professional and a, a professional healthcare facility manager. And I would like to think, that's why I'm, I'm capping it off with that, I would like to think that uh, it's also the pinnacle of this program. You know, we're really trying to generate a deeper level of competency for our industry. But at the same time, we want a deeper level of relationship. And ironically, um, I'm aspiring to try to do that in a online module, which would almost seem an oxymoron. But I can tell you right now, having been in this uh, seat here and doing these lectures and working with you students for these semesters, it's kind of fun because I can actually sense a deeper level of not just competency, but I also can sense a deeper level of networking and relationships and, and maybe even a little bit of empathy. So, um, you know, that being said, that's an overview of the courses. There is a final test or exam. And um, this final test and exam we're going to do is going to be, <laughs> we're going to end the semester, unlike most of you who've been in these starting classes, uh, haven't experienced much before with a final. It's going to be an actual test. Um, it's going to be a CHFM-like test that's going to require you to go back and pull all your books out and your research and um, it's going to challenge you it's going to challenge you because you know most of you either have or aspire to have your CHFM from here and so that's been part of my goal to prepare you for a CHFM and this test I'm going to give is again going to be a CHFM like test so that you can have even more confidence maybe leaving this program with your experience if you have enough years to um, you know, sign up and take take the test like some of you already have. And some of you who have been in this course, in fact, even by now, by the time you're taking this, you have taken the CHFM. And many of you who've taken, in fact, all of you who've taken it, have commented about how valuable this course was for you taking the test or would have been. And so this is just, again, another step in that direction, in that journey. I do believe the combination of CHFM with the HFL uh, credential is going to be very very powerful for you going forward in your careers so again i hope i hope uh you know that you all did uh, benefit greatly from um the courses i'm sure you did uh, but i even more so i hope that this set this course um hfl 270 you really do see it as a capstone for all the all the great work that's been done over the last several semesters uh, so here we go um, HFL 270, Capstone 